today. We're exactly two months away from Christmas, the season of ill will or good cheer, depending. Statistics from uh, BankServe Africa indicate that consumers are generally very careful over last year's December period, spending money mainly at supermarkets and fast foods rather than going on holiday, for example. Now we're joined by Mel Erdang, who's Director of Retail and Leasing at Liberty Properties, and Derek Engelbrecht, Retail and Consumer Product Sector Leader at EY. So Derek, let's start with you. I'm still getting used to EY instead of Ernst & Young. I still don't know why they did that, but we are getting used to it. Uh, Derek, I find the Christmas thing quite depressing. We've got these Christmas trees up already. Uh, people are already thinking about what they're going to spend. Uh, but as I noted there, last year it wasn't the usual splurge. What are we expecting this year? Uh, regrettably, I think it's going to be more of the same. Last year, quarter four was a 2% year-on-year volume growth increase. Um, and I think this year, when one considers uh, just the general mood, uh, there's very few light points that seems to suggest that that will be much different. Yeah. I think your comment regarding the timing of Christmas, it's interesting how retailers are bringing that forward uh, <laughs> by a week every year. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's really just to start stimulating those thoughts early on in the process mm. to capture those individuals that need to work up some enthusiasm. Mm. Well, you heard Derek's comments there that retailers are bringing that date a lot uh, uh, more forward in, in terms of uh, the, the Christmas trees being set up. Maybe next year we'll see it in September, hey Dave? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but, but how come is this, I mean, depressed consumer environment, consumers are under, under, under pressure with regard to their spend. What, how are the retailers positioning themselves for, for this December? For the retailers, it's an exceptionally important part of the year. Probably the most, well, it is the most important part of the year. They cannot afford to have anything but a decent Christmas. I don't use the word a good Christmas because as much as they may like that, in a current economic climate, the fact of the matter is that they probably have expectations which can be met. But nonetheless, they have to meet those expectations. They've been spending a lot of time purchasing what they believe is the right product for the consumer in the current environment. And they obviously need to make that available to showcase it and to get the, the cheer and the hype going mm -hmm. to ensure that at the end of the day, that's what happens. Yeah. Mel, to, just to uh, stay with you for a moment, then come back to Derek in, uh, in a moment. You, as, as the, the person, well, the, the company that uh, looks after the space, you've got to look after the area, the places where the, where the shopping is done. You've also got to gear up, haven't you? I mean, you've got, to, you've got more traffic, you've got safety issues, you've got crowding issues. You don't want your uh, tenants to say, look, this isn't a nice place to, to uh, do business in. Absolutely, David. I think the one thing that we need to recognise in South Africa, and particularly in cities which are landlocked, is that shopping centres happen to be the equivalent of our parks. It's where people go in terms of a, a public space. It's where they hang out, for want of a better word. Mm -hmm. And in that particular instance, you're right. We have to gear up. We have to make that those centres, make sure that those centres are a more pleasant place to be than many other places. Mm -hmm. And therefore, uh, most of our staff uh, are, uh, are on alert, or are, are, are on uh, duty at that particular point in time. And they're there to service both the customers as well as the retailers. And successfully, I might say, it, it happens in most instances. A good point that you made brought up there, Dave, because we know that during the festive season there's been a lot of cash in transit heights take place, mm. security. Uh, some security concerns there. We also saw what recently took place in, in Kenya with the Westgate shopping disaster. Any, any uh, guards that you're putting on hold there, I mean, uh, I to prepare for such events? I think the, the finest guard that one could do is, uh, is genuinely vigilance. In other words, there's an information gathering technique that needs to happen for something like Kenya to have taken place. And, uh, and that takes many months of planning. In this particular instance, we need to have made sure that for many years and continuously, we keep up the pace of making sure that we don't allow it to get to that type of situation. So therefore, you're right, every single year at this point in time, there is a heightened awareness from our side. There are additional precautions that are put in place in order to try and avert these types of things. Derek, looking at uh, you, you're called the retail and consumer product sector leader. Now, why do you have this function? What are you drawing out of this? What are you telling your clients? Uh, what are the things that you're pulling out at the moment and uh, revealing? I think two main trends which, which changes year on year is, is if one considers the power play, the, the power of bal the balance of power between the branded fast moving consumer goods companies and the retailers. These two partners, uh, which work together most of the time, find themselves often uh, having to make decisions which either suit the inbound supply chain or the, the way in which they serve the Give consumer. Give an example of that kind of... Uh, so something that one would typically see is, is the 
the manner and, and the success with which soaring input costs on the front part of the supply chain commodity prices eventually make their way into the price on the retailer's shelf. Um, both parties, of course, would want to take as much of, of that increase uh, out of the system, but it's inevitable that one of those two players are more successful at recovering that input cost um, and, and often the consumer is the net beneficiary thereof. Mm. Um, it obviously also happens that both parties uh, effectively add to that cost push and then you have the consumer on the, on the wrong side of that stick. So that's one of the trends that one can watch um, play out literally year by year. Mm. Um, in, in a South African retail environment we have uh, a large degree of retail concentration so mm. that makes that uh, even more interesting dynamic mm. to watch. Recently, uh, Derek, we also saw retail sales coming out, which was surprisingly well above expectations. The likes of Clicks as well as Pick and Pay also publishing solid numbers with regard to that. Uh, despite that, CPI as well out this week, it seems as though sales are going to go up, but consumers are still under pressure. Where might we see South African consumers cutting back on spend? Maybe not necessarily in the food department, but homeware? Homeware is certainly one of those areas where, where people uh, will apply some discretionary spending. It, it makes a, a home feel more welcome. Uh, it's a very immediate uh, investment in your own well-being, so to speak. There are some decisions regarding some of the durable goods, which I think people will literally just postpone until it becomes necessary instead of, of just upgrading to the latest piece of technology. So there are certainly some discretionary spending, which I think will um, factor into how those volumes grow um, on a year-on-year -year basis. Melville, what uh, worries you most going into this uh, period? I think what, what concerns us the most is not necessarily, as you mentioned, food spend or, for that matter, luxury spend, because I think the fact of the matter is that we've seen a rise in luxury goods spending over the last couple of months, uh, in fact, over the last two to three years, and those retailers are doing particularly well. I think where there is a difficulty is in, is, is in the mid-category, and there what we may find is that people are, are not as willing to, to incur debt as they may have been in the past, and therefore there may be a bit of pressure on that category. Having said that, the one thing that I think we all need to remember is that even in difficult times, there are very few opportunities that you as a decision maker, as a homemaker, as a family person, have got to uplift your family and to provide them with sustenance for the year ahead in terms of uh, strength as a family. And people use the festive season to do that. And therefore, I don't think that we're going to be disappointed in the festive season. I think traders will put their best foot forward, and we have great traders in our centres, and I think they will really come to the fore, and that people will do what it is within a comfortable mode, probably being just a little bit more responsible. And to add to your point that you started in the beginning with, David, I think where the, the pinch really comes is in holidays. In other words, more people are tending to, instead of paying money on a holiday in terms of accommodation and travel, utilising that to stay at home. 